As I said before in an earlier video, this brake fluid level is extremely low. There's a huge bubble in it and barely any brake fluid. The reason for it isn't a leak, but because the brake pads are extremely worn. In this video, I'll show you how to change them. Won't take long, five minutes standard time. This is a 2011 Honda CBR 125R. And the business end here is down here. This is the brake caliper assembly. You're gonna need three tools. Eight millimeter socket, 12 millimeter socket, and the torque wrench is much advised. Other than that, you're gonna need a clamp, a clamp to reset the brake, uh, the brake piston, just like so, like a woodworking clamp or a C clamp or anything, and maybe a pair of pliers. Something with soft jaws would be ideal. What you need to remove is these two 12 millimeter mounting bolts from there and this 8 millimeter pin here. Almost done with this one. And there. This pin here holds the brake pads in place. Uh, where do I put it? I'm gonna need to clean it. And of course you'll need, you'll need your new brake pads. Uh, the dealer says this would fit, so we'll see. And here is these two bolts. I just want to put them back there so I don't lose them massively. And there is my old brake pads. That's how they look. And you can see how thin the pad material is on both or either of these. This chunk of metal is called the backing. And this is actually the pad material that does the braking. And uh, it's, it's, it's down to the last millimeter there. Same on the other side. Whereas on a new one, okay, it's in the package, but you can still see. And you know what, just give me 10 seconds here while I open it. Let's see. Let's open it semi-tolerably like that. Almost there without poking my finger with this screwdriver. Okay. There, your brake pad. Old brake pad. Other than the old one being dirty, and you see the you can see the thickness of the brake pad on the new one and the thickness of the brake pad on the old one. So there's nothing wrong with the old one, but it's extremely worn, so don't play around with safety much. Just get rid of the old ones. You also want to verify that the old and the new are of the same shape. These ones seem to match, so so the other ones will need to match as well. Let me just double check it. Yeah, that's right. There, you can see the thickness, how much pad is on a new one. It's about, I don't know, five millimeters, a quarter inch of pad, and this is down to a sixteenth of an inch. So that's enough of the visual and uh, we're gonna need to uh, I usually do this I pull this one out keep these ones these uh, uh, studs there clean but this way I can get to the pistons because I need to clean them with a rag which I left inside but before you push these brake pistons back into this housing here and here you need to clean them so don't force the dirt back into the uh, brake fluid and the housing okay so I'm gonna run back for a rag because I forgot to bring one out all right we're back with the rag and I already cleaned one of the pistons you can see it's nice and shiny versus the other one that that hasn't been cleaned yet uh, first I clean what is visible and I rotate the uh, brake piston with a pair of pliers. What I found here was uh, vice grips and i uh, show you how I do it. Let me see how does it fit the camera. I'm kind of gonna have to come like so. So I just barely grab the edge with very little force. Very little force and just barely grab the edge 
of the piston. Why? Because the jaws on the vice grips will destroy the finish on the brake piston. Okay? This titanium nitride coating that's on it is gonna be damaged by the jaws of these pliers. But it's only gonna be damaged here along the edge. Okay, so here on the side wall, where it's important that it's intact, uh, leave it intact, please, okay? Do yourself a favor. You can also see that this piston here is further out than this one. I did that by squeezing the brake lever, like, like so, and you can see that both pistons move, and both pistons advance. You can see where the clean starts, where the clean ends and the dirt starts, or the other way around. I want to remove all the dirt from it, and for that, I need it to advance it a little bit. Once I'm done removing all the dirt, including the very the, the one that's at the bottom, that's hard to get to. Then what I do is I grab this handy wood clamp like so. I like the soft jaws on it because uh, I don't want any more damage on my brake pistons and this one just is squeezed back really gently into the caliper assembly like that and the brake in operation will advance. I'm gonna hold this one with my hand. You can see it will advance the brake piston you can you can hear the uh, I'm, I'm operating the brake. You can hear the switch clicking on it. That's how force is exerted on the brake pads, which are here, and the brake pad in turn is exerting force on the brake rotor. That's how these brakes work. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this one and. Push it back. So this one is reset. Now I'm gonna clean this one. The dirt is the dust from the brake pad. The brake pad material is toxic, so don't clean this with compressed air, please. It's gonna be all over your face and clothes and whatever. And then a few years later, you're wondering why you have, I don't know. Uh, Silicosis, silicosis or anything that asbestos causes. So I just wanna grabbing the very edge and very gently. I'm not even looking the pliers in, and it's turning just gently like so. It should turn without a great amount of force, okay? And whatever you do, don't pull it out of the caliper, okay? Because you're gonna have brake fluid dripping left, right, and center and you're gonna have to bleed the brake and start all over again. That's an hour and a half to get it done versus 10 minutes for cleaning the brake and putting on the new brake pads. Let me just finish this, just very gently grip it along the edge there. The last little bit of dirt. There about. So that's as long as it Okay, now it's nice and clean. And uh, sometimes I uh, scrape some of the compacted uh, dirt pad material from the uh, this retaining uh, flat spring here that's at the bottom of the, there you can see it, at the bottom of the caliper assembly. But uh, it's not too crusty and it's not too bad. I'm gonna reset the brake like so and uh, you notice that this one came out a little bit of course because the uh, the brake fluid goes from one chamber to another so you're gonna have to play with it a little bit until they are both reset what the heck put the clamp on both and when both are reset and uh, housed in the caliper body again if you come up there and take a look at the brake fluid level You'll see that it it came up there, leveled the bike out. There, we have all of a sudden a lot of brake fluid in the system. You can see that the bubble indeed is very little. It's all right, nothing leaked out, there's no loss there. That would be, there, that's level bike. That's normal 
There should be a very little bubble there. All right, I cleaned and uh, lubricated the uh, studs on uh, this part of the brake here and I put it back where it was. In operation, the brake should self-center when the brake pads are mounted here and the brake rotor is running through here. And to do that, the, the studs should be lubricated and uh, this boot should be, these, these two rubber boots should be covering uh, the parts of the metal there and the uh, and the grease that's on it I'm trying to move it so you can see it that in operation it should self-center and move like that and if you can see it there there something like that yeah that's there we go so in operation that's what it should do and these bolts mount into those holes this is the threaded hole for it there's nothing in the forks here in terms of threads okay so that's how this works and mounts. Now, putting on the brake pads, look at the two shapes. These shapes have two holes here because that's where this pin goes through, either this way or the other way around. I don't know, and it doesn't matter much. And uh, one of these pads uh, will, yeah, one of these pads will be in direct contact with the brake pistons so that will be this shape because that's the only one that fits there this one since don't break your brake pads okay they're brittle sorry guys should have held it this way and this brake pad here uh, is uh, supported there on this uh, piece of metal there that I cleaned and it's gonna be coming in here and the pin is gonna go through this retaining pin will go through that hole so I just need the other piece I dropped <laughs> yeah so don't chip it if you can avoid it there and the pin only goes in one way and it is this way it needs a little bit of compressing because there is this flat retaining spring behind these you can see a brake pad moving against the against the spring so just put this one back like so it's gonna be I'm gonna need to be tightened obviously but uh, there and uh, between the brake pads goes the brake rotor uh, have clean hands okay on my hands now they are dirty but it's only brake dust okay no grease on the brake pads okay let me repeat that no grease, no lubricant, no antifreeze, no engine coolant, no nothing on the brake pads, okay? Seriously, dudes, your life depends on it, okay? So, and then this way, there, that's, that's all about mounting. The brake rotor is there between the brake pads, and you put this bolt back, and you put this bolt back, hand tighten it. And of course, get your socket out. That's about there. That was my eyeballing for 15 foot pounds. Okay, 10 foot pounds on the little one, and on this one, I'm just gonna be eyeballing 15 foot pounds. Of course, you're gonna need to bring out your torque wrench to make sure it's tightened to specifications, but this is just for snugging it up, okay? This is not final assembly here. This is just snugging it up. Good. Now, I'm gonna show you something at the brake lever. At this point, and this is important, the brake pads are a certain distance away from the brake pad. So the brake lever runs all the way to the handlebar. There's nothing wrong. You need to do it a few times until it until the brake pads come into contact with the brake rotor down there so now they are in contact I know and next thing to do what I need to do is get the torque wrench tighten these two bolts in particular and if there's a torque specs on this one that, that bolt as well and then do a test ride at low speed okay like walking pace would be a nice test ride for 
testing the brake system, okay? That's very important. Don't go anywhere without engaging your brakes, okay? So that's how hydraulic disc brakes or this uh, fluid operated disc brakes work. That's how you can do a brake change, a brake pad change, and please, whatever you do, be safe with your brake pads, okay?